32. A fine time of night to be calling it a day. Huh? Even a private detective has to balance his checkbook. Hello, Mr. Hastings. Hello, Mr. Diamond. You working late tonight, too? Just going over some of the bills. Yeah, well, it's that time of the year. That's what I've been doing, trying to figure out some kind of an inventory schedule. Detective business good? Oh, it's pretty good. Uncle Sam is going to like his share of what we took in last year. <laughs> How's jewelry? Uh, the retailers are screaming. Merchandise isn't moving. You're a manufacturer, aren't you, Mr. Hastings? Yeah. But the people aren't buying the stuff you make. Oh, speak floor. Excuse me, I have a mail letter. Can I uh, give you a lift somewhere? No, oh, thanks. Desiano. What's he doing these days? Ten years. Down Moore prison. <laughs> That's a good place for him. And while he's in this time, I'll let the dentist fix his teeth. He wouldn't be a bad looking fellow. Uh -huh. I can't understand you, Rick. It's very simple, Mac. I've been through the books twice. Our boy isn't there. You sure you saw his face? For just that long. You'd know him? I'd know him. And you wouldn't kid me? Kid you? A guy takes a shot at you. Now, you wouldn't take that personally and go looking for him yourself, would you? I might if he just shot at me and missed, period. That's why I came to see you. He killed another man. A man who'd be home right now with his wife and kids if he hadn't been standing next to me. I'll see him. Where are you going? To talk to a widow. Push the wrong button. I'm looking for the Hastings apartment. Well, this is the Hastings apartment. I'm Mrs. Hastings' sister. If you're from the newspapers, my sister won't be able to see you tonight. Uh, no, I'm a private detective. My name's Richard Diamond. I happened to be with your brother-in-law when he was killed. Oh? I don't want to make it any rougher on your sister than it's already been, but I think there's something she should know about tonight. Come in, please. Thank you. I'm Monica Freeborn, Mr. Diamond. Uh, perhaps if you could tell me what you have to say to my sister. You see, the doctor was just here and he gave her a sedative. Oh, I'm sorry. Is she asleep? No, but he wants her to rest. I think it would be better if you could give me some idea before we disturb her. All right, I'll let you be the judge. This won't bring your brother-in-law back to life, but it may help clean up his memory. I don't understand. Well, a man gets shot down by a hired killer, everyone's always going to want to know why. Who he was mixed up with. So many hoodlums getting killed that way today, uh, nobody's ready to believe it can happen to an honest man. And this time it did. He was just unlucky. He was standing next to me. I'll tell my sister. You won't have to. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hastings. I didn't mean to disturb you. I just thought it was something you should know. Did you see the man who did it? Well, very briefly. I'd never seen him before, but if I see him again, I'll know him. Will that help anything? I think so. 
He uh, won't kill another innocent bystander. You better get back to bed. Thank you for taking your time to come by and tell me. Stop. Turn out your lights. What do we do now, Neck? Just keep both hands up on that steering wheel where I can see them. seen you before, have I? Sometimes they don't make a very lasting impression. And then again, it's so permanent. abandoned out in Queens, towed it in here. Had late in print school over it, nothing we could use. Well, it's too bad late in Prince couldn't have been a little tidier. It's a buck and a half car wash they clobbered. You're lucky to be alive. As long as I am lieutenant, I like to drive a clean car. Besides, how long can I go on pressing my luck, huh? Well, you've pressed it before. Yeah, I know. I also know when I'm giving you a straight line, too. I'm not trying to be funny, Rick. You always wanted to be a big independent operator. Well, you've gotten away with it. And this time's different, Mac. This time it's a guy from out of left field with a gun, a guy I don't even know. Probably a hired killer, but I don't know who's paying him. I know there are probably a lot of people that don't love me. Oh, come now, Rick. That's hard to believe. And hey, maybe you can find out for me who's been released from Sing Sing lately. Maybe one of my old playmates are nursing a grudge. Remember Kenny Lambert? Kenny Lambert, uh, uh, I've seen this guy twice. He's not Lambert. Oh, it wouldn't have been Lambert himself. He was a big wheel, smart. Nobody could touch him. You blew the whistle on him in that extortion case. He swore he'd kill you when he got out of Sing Sing. If he meant it, he'd been ported a killer to do the job. Well, Mr. Lambert got out two months ago, and none of his old friends have seen him. Well, you boys can run down Lambert without my help. I need a shower, a shave, and 12 hours in the sack. And a car wash, Lieutenant. Uh, no friend of mine, I'd still be waiting. Let's put it this way, he's a bad shot. Killed the wrong man. Why don't you fire him? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then what are you doing in my apartment? Just dropped in to use your phone. You got a dime, chum, be my guest. No, I want you to make the call for me. Dial the police. Ask for that detective buddy of yours, Mago. Do what I tell you, Diamond. Uh, 
Let me speak to Lieutenant Bacot, please. What am I supposed to say to him? Just tell him that Kenny Lambert and friend are here. Tell him. Mac, this is Diamond. I'm at my apartment. Lambert's here. He's got a gun. Diamond. Frank. Frank. Diamond. Rick, what's going on? Rick, answer me. Rick. Sorry. Your party just went out. Come on, Diamond, get with it. Come on. Come on, get healthy. Any minute McGo's riot boys are going to be breaking down a door and we've got something to settle. A little personal matter. Well, why don't you pull the trigger? You can only burn once and you already got that made. No, no, I don't want to kill you. I wouldn't be here if that was the idea. Well, what's the idea? When you sent me up five years ago, I had just one idea. To get you. Now I got a better one. I just burned the mortgage. We're even, buddy boy. Not where you're standing, buddy boy. Oh, look at it my way. I did five years in account of you. You earned that. Nobody framed you. All right, I'm a poor loser. But for five years, Diamond, I hated your guts. When I heard you were due to get knocked off and McGo started looking for me, I knew I had to get the job done before somebody took one of us out of circulation. Well, McGo. You finally found me. You all right, Rick? Oh, he's great. Just a little mileage on him. You said he had a gun. Where is it? Here. It's a beautiful weapon, ain't it? War souvenir. Too bad it's been deactivated. Yeah. The barrel's been plugged and welded. Oh, uh, yeah. Get out. Uh, come again? I said get out. No, ain't you gonna arrest me? I don't seem to have a complaining witness. Well, look, maybe this monster won't shoot, but it raises a lump on the head. Take him downstairs and point him in any direction. I don't care where, just see that it keeps moving. I just beat up your best friend. What does the guy have to do to get arrested? Take him out of here. I hope I'm not being too subtle for you, Lieutenant. No, I know you're a warped little brain. <coughs> Lambert worked you over figuring I'd throw him in a cell so he'd have a perfect alibi in case you got killed. Uh, you heard him. We disappointed him. I had a reason. What's your excuse? What do you mean? Lambert isn't trying to kill you. Lieutenant, somebody is trying to kill me. Uh, not until after you saw them shoot Hastings. Hastings was an innocent bystander. Bystander, maybe. Innocent? Mm-mm. Robbery detail made a routine check of his shop. Found a lot of interesting hardware. Hastings was redesigning stolen jewelry so it could be sold in legitimate stores. Get your hat. I want you to come with me. Where will I clean up and get a shirt? <clears throat> Where are we going? To talk to a widow. <laughs> Lieutenant. 
Lieutenant McGough, police. May we come in, please? Why, certainly, Lieutenant. Thank you. Uh, you've met Mr. Diamond. We've met. I'd like to talk to your sister. Oh, well, Lieutenant, she had a terrible night. She couldn't sleep. Her doctor just left, unless it's something terribly urgent. Uh... How about for the Lieutenant's bedside manner? Uh, all right, just for a few moments then. This way. about your friend. For a police officer, he certainly is a gentleman. Why the qualification? Well, they aren't always, are they? Oh, you sound bitter. You lose an argument with the traffic officer? All the time. Well, the next time you get a ticket, uh, give it to me. Oh, you can fix tickets. No, but it'd be nice hearing from you. Well, I probably have several right now. I parked out front when I came over last night, and after 8 o'clock, it's a one-hour zone. I haven't had time to move it. Oh, give me the keys to your car. I'll move it for you. Will you? Sure. You know, you really could help me if, uh, if you would. The lady you just named your dragon and, uh, I'll slay it. No dragon. Last night when I came over, I didn't even stop to pick up a toothbrush and... I was just wondering if you'd go over to the apartment with me and and pick up some things. Well, stop wondering. I'll tell the lieutenant where I'm going. <laughs> I already have. In fact, he uh, recommended you. Well, remind me to thank the lieutenant when we get back. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Hastings. All right, Rick, let's go. Hey, Rick. Diamond. to make to you. About what? Well, I didn't really tell Mago that you were coming up here. I, I just said that so you wouldn't tell him. Why? Well, I didn't want to take a chance. On what? He might have said no. And you wouldn't have wanted that, would you? Lady, I'm your slave. What's the matter? Well, um, you said you'd help me. And I brought you over here to do just that, remember? Yeah, well, I remember. There's plenty of time for that, isn't it? Well, I'm afraid there isn't. Uh... My sister really shouldn't be left alone, Rick. I, I don't know how long ago we'll be up there. Well, don't look at me like that. Like what? Well, like you hate me. It isn't always going to be like this. That is it. A promissory note. A promissory note. Well, uh, when do I collect? On demand. I see. Well, that is just as soon as my sister is able to take care of herself again. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Just long enough to pack some things? What a snow job. Promissory note. 
Payment on demand. What's her angle? It's too fast and too pat, and Hastings is too dead. Somebody's pulling the strings. It could be the man who tried to rub me out in that alley last night. Could be. Here they are. Looks like you're going to state one. You're furious with me, aren't you? Now, why should I be? Well, uh, any gentleman would think of a reason. Monica, I don't want to play games. I don't know what you have in the suitcases, but I don't want to stand here holding them. Well, why don't you take them over to my sister's and, uh, Come back for me. Well, what will you be doing while I'm gone? Oh, things. Things. You will come back, won't you? Oh. I'm afraid I will. <laughs> Put these. Well, Mrs. Hastings, how you've changed. Shut up. So little Monica set me up for you again. Only this time she stacked the deck. I got my hands full of suitcases. I don't know what you're talking about, Diamond. You know what I'm talking about. Monica's idea, the suitcases. I don't know whose idea it was. Just hang on to them. Come on, cut out the talk. We've got to hurt. Well, Mrs. Hastings, so you're in this. Are you and Monica a sister act? I can do very well without Monica. Hey, Monica isn't in on this. No part of it, Mr. Diamond. Monica's always had all the looks, all the men, all the money. Until the gentleman behind you came along and showed my husband how to make his foolish little jewelry business pay. Now it's my turn. Mr. Hastings couldn't stand prosperity or uh, losing his wife, which... Shut up. Well, if you're on the level about Monica, she's going to miss me. That's why I'm here. I'll handle Monica. Let's get going. Come on. Oh, where? Where you'll never be heard of again. Get your coat, honey. Killed Mrs. Hastings, too. Only that one was an accident. Mm. How you doing? Okay, leaking little sawdust. I thought you hated my guts. I do. I guess I'm getting used to you. Well, I take a little getting used to. What made you stay in the game? Well, I'd ended. I figured I might as well see all the cards. Besides, if anybody killed you, I was in. I mean, in the electric chair. It still won't shoot. How's that for a whole card? Lieutenant? Here's a war souvenir for you. Where are you going? Well, I just remembered I have to see a lady about a promissory note.
Level 47. Good evening, Mr. Marquis. Antonio, you see the show gets started on time tonight, huh? I'll take care of it, boss. Mr. Diamond? It sounds a little formal, but uh, that's it. Somehow I'd uh, pictured you differently. Older and uh, fat. <laughs> and with a magnifying glass in your hand? Well, that's the way I really look. This is just a disguise. Oh. Aren't you uh, going to ask me in? Well, the thought had crossed my mind. Uh, but then I remembered how to say no, uh, no. You look much too nice to be so cruel. You know, I tried calling you first, but um, your call service said you couldn't be disturbed. So you came all the way over here just to prove how wrong they were? I came because I need your help. Oh. Suddenly you're beginning to sound like a client. This, uh... This what? Janet Marquis. Hmm? Mrs. Janet Marquis. Well, that's strike two. One more, and I go back to the book. Oh, please, Mr. Diamond. I haven't much time. I if my husband knew I were here, well, I'm afraid he'd be very angry. Advertise the sign. Back to the book. I'm willing to pay. Whatever you ask. Mrs. Marquis, why don't you come by my office tomorrow? We'll discuss it. But he may be dead by then. Who may be dead? Eddie, my husband. Last night, someone took a shot at him. And luckily, whoever it was missed. Well, have you ever thought of calling the police? They're very interested in that sort of thing. But I can't. Eddie won't let me. Well, you see, he was in a little bit of trouble a few years ago, and... Well, ever since then, he's just hated the sight of a uniform. What kind of trouble? It was nothing serious. Now he has a, a very good business. He owns the Purple Penguin. I've heard of him. Find out who's after him, Mr. Diamond. I'd... I'd be very grateful. Please? Well, all right. Uh, just one thing. By profession, I'm naturally suspicious. Uh, I know a wife sometimes has uh, plenty of good reasons to get rid of a husband. Now, you don't really think that I would... Uh... Hire you if I had anything to do with it, do you? Well, it's been done. Mr. Diamond. He's the man I married. Now, I really think I'd better be getting back to the club. Well, I'll change and go with him. Oh, no. If Eddie saw us coming in together, well, he might get the wrong idea. He's impulsive. And very jealous. <laughs>
all right you delivered your present. I suppose you tell me why I'm so lucky. Call it, Roy. You think you're pretty cute, don't you, fella? I've had my wife followed for a long time. Tonight it finally paid off. If that was your wife that just left here, I've never seen her before in my life. Oh, now, you ought to be able to come up with a better story than that. My name is Richard Diamond. I'm a private detective. If that was your wife, she came here to hire me to look after you. It's on the level? Here are my credentials. You mean Janet came here to you tonight because she was worried about me? What, are you Eddie Marquis? Yeah. Well, I'm the boy that's supposed to see that uh, you don't get hurt. Well, what do you know? I made a mistake. You sure did. Now, oh, you look all right. Roy's very careful. He never leaves any marks. Your concern touches me deeply. Oh, now, wait a minute, Diamond. There's no reason for you to get upset. I'll make it up to you. My wife had a pretty good idea. I could use someone like you. I'll tell you what. You forget about the little roughing up that Roy gave you. And whatever my wife was going to pay you, I'll double it. Well, the pain seems to be leaving. Good. See you at the club. At the club. <laughs> Hi, Rick. What brings you here? Eddie Marquis. You ever hear him? Sure. Sure, he was in the rackets for a couple of years. Worked with George Bruntner till we broke up his gang. Bruntner skipped the country. We rounded up the rest of the boys. The worst we could ever get on Marcus was carrying a gun without a permit. Since then, nothing, as far as I know. Why, you don't even need files, do you, Lieutenant? Well, it's hard to forget a smooth operator like Bruntner. Now, why the quiz show? Well, the Marquises, uh, Mr. and Mrs., paid me a visit tonight. Seems like someone's trying to gun Eddie down. They want me to make like the Secret Service. You mean there was an attempt made on his life? That's what I mean. Now, wait a minute, Rick. I better put a couple of boys on this case. After all, we don't want to take a chance on a man getting killed. Lieutenant, I was hoping you'd say something nice like that. You don't know what a comfort it'll be to know that some of your boys are around. I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. Now, just knock it off. I don't want to catch you talking to Tonio again, do you understand? But we were just talking. He was telling me about his brother's new girl. Never mind. Just stay away from all the guys, then. And don't let me have to tell you about Tonio again. I see the way Tonio looks at you. The way you smile at him. The way you act friendly. Too friendly. Everywhere I go, every time I even stop to say hello to somebody, that, that big goon of yours is breathing down my throat, watching me. You can't do that, Eddie. I can do whatever I want to do. I will leave you. If it's the last thing I ever do, I'm going to leave. It's going to be the last thing you ever do, doll. Excuse me, uh, I guess I'm early. Come on in, Diamond. Well, Diamond, how do you want to work things? Uh, well, I guess you can start off by not calling me Diamond. Let's see, um, Richards, Paul Richards. I'll be your new press agent. The natives get a little shy when they know there's a private detective around. All right. Anything else? Hey, boss, a uh, couple of customers out front looking for you. All right, Tony, I'll be right out. Oh, Tony, I want you to meet Paul Richards, my new press agent. Richards, I'm very glad to meet you. How do you do? I'll see you around. I, I got to get her back up front. Nice looking fellow. Too nice. He's a big man with the ladies. I guess I'd better go with you. No. I don't need any bodyguard tailing me around. You just stick to your snooping and let me know if you come up with anything, okay? Okay. Hey, Eddie, did you get a load of the house? Man, am I packing them in. Why, it's the crowd of the waiters are going to need roller skates to get around to them. You'll be funny tonight, huh? Now, when don't I leave them laughing? Hiya. Hiya. You must be Jimmy White. Why not? I know. You caught my act and you love me. <laughs> no, I didn't catch your act, but I've seen your picture in the paper. Ah. 
Oh, my name is Paul Richards. Uh, I'm the new press agent here. Well, it can't hurt anybody. Just see that you get my name right. And in big letters, Mr. Funny, F-U-N-N-Y. <laughs> I got it. Uh, you like playing this club? Oh, the loot's fine. I'm working for Eddie. Oh, that's murder. Yeah, he is a little uh, different. Different? Listen, the guy's strictly a nothing. He's dirt, a real pig with no feeling whatsoever. Have you met Janet yet? Yeah, we met. Now, there's a good kid. She used to hoof in the line here. Along comes Eddie. Gives her some presents, starts making her think he's a prince, and tells her how much he loves her. Well, he does love her, doesn't he? Yeah, like a miser loves his gold. Why, that poor kid can't take a breath. Without him, he should have a full report. Well, has she ever given him any reason to be jealous? Well, she's, uh... She's friendly. You might say she's got a big heart. But if it's anything serious, I don't think that way. What I'm thinking is that you seem to know an awful lot about her. That's all. Well, I've known her since she was a kid, and she comes to me with her troubles. I give her a shoulder to cry on. Hey, I got a show to do. Oh, those lucky people out there. Come on. Follow me, fella, and I'll kill you. <laughs> Mystery. Oh, oh no. My professor at City College says that uh, this book's a classic. The professor? Well, sure, I go to school in the afternoons. No kidding. Oh, well, he says a girl's got to have more than a pretty face and a good figure. Well, I could give him a good argument on that. Oh, hold it a minute, huh? Check room. Yeah. Who? Richards? I never heard of him. Oh, wait, uh, I'm Richards. Oh, why'd you say so? Hello, this is Richards. Diamond, get over here right away. My office. Well, what is it, Eddie? No, Red. Red, no! You can't! try the train. All right. Questioning's over for tonight. You can all go now. But I don't want anybody to leave town. Is that clear? Yes, yeah, I gotta call my agent. Jimmy, Jimmy, do you mind if I see you later, huh? All right, a little later. Okay. Rick? Rick, I want you to stay on the case. I can't blame you for what happened, but but I want that murderer caught. This is Marquis. Let's get something straight, okay? As far as I can tell, uh, someone did you a favor. Eddie and I had our differences, but I didn't want to see him dead. All right? All right. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night. Stay close to her. You don't think she did it, do you? No, the door was locked on the inside. She didn't have time to kill him and get around to the hall door before you got there. Then why did you put a watch on her? Well, I need a motive. She's a beautiful woman. That's not bad. I come up with something else. Well, it could have been anyone in the club. They were all accounted for. Yeah, you were talking to that hat check girl. Roy Antonio were working out front where they could be seen. Jimmy was on stage doing his act. Had to be the guy that tried to run me down. Well, I'm having the knife checked. No fingerprints. Probably wore gloves. Well, I... Well, you giving up? Well, I'll think it over and let you know in the morning. Yeah, uh, Mac. Does the name, uh, 
Red mean anything to you? Red? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be the color of my eyeballs if I don't get some sleep. Good night, Rick. Good night, Rick. Thanks, I uh, never wear. What's the matter? Don't I appeal to you? Well, now I thought you had a boyfriend. Hmm. The fat chance I've got now that Mrs. Marquis is a free woman. My boyfriend's got an open field now. It's probably just what he's been hoping for. You mean Red? Yeah. I didn't know you knew Red. Oh, sure. Red and I are old friends. I've been meaning to look him up. I've got his address right here. Oh, no, you don't. Your name ain't Richards. I bet you you're a cop. I bet you I'm not. And I bet you you're kidding me. <laughs> uh, bartender, uh, bring the lady what she's drinking. I'll have a little scotch and a little water, OK? <laughs> you changed your mind, didn't you? Mm. Yes. Yeah. I knew you couldn't resist me. Here's to us. Well, say, I'm sorry. Wait a minute, I'll get it for you. Hey, huh? You're a gentleman, that's what you are. You can always tell a gentleman by the way he treats a lady. You know, another thing a gentleman always does, he um, always sees that a lady gets home all right. Okay. I get your cab. Wait a minute. I don't want to go home yet. You went for it, darling. If they ever find out it was my knife. Don't worry. The pressure's off you. I'd never believe somebody stole it. They'd say I did it. You believe me, darling, don't you? I swear I had nothing to do with it. Sure. Sure. I believe you. Bunny's little black book had just what I was after. The address of the guy called Red. It was awfully late to be calling on someone, but I had a feeling that uh, Red would be awake and not too happy to see me. Who is it? It's me, Red. Hold it. What is this? Just take it easy. What do you want with me? I know some people that are dying to talk to you. Cops? That's right. They want to ask you a few questions about what you were doing at Eddie's place last night. Oh, you got this all wrong. I don't think so. Put your coat on, Red. Let's go. You're not taking me in. You interested in odds? The odds just changed, and you're on the short end. That was nice, Roy. You've got all sorts of jobs, haven't you? Nothing wrong. Roy worked for Eddie. I paid him to look out for my interests down at the club. What were your interests at the club? I was going to come out anyway. I was Eddie's partner, his silent partner. Well, now it's beginning to make sense. Eddie had two things you wanted, the other half of the business and uh, his wife. Time up, Roy. Keep him out of circulation. And you get ready for a good night's sleep. Now, don't put yourself out of my account. Give me a belt. Well, it speaks. Certainly. Here. Okay, get over here. Now, what do they call your friend besides Red? Thank you. 
tell him a girl would be happy to know that. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, sure. Brunner gets Eddie to front the club for him because Eddie's clean and he's not. Then along comes Eddie's wife, and between the two of them, they plan getting rid of Eddie. But why would Brunner do it? Uh, Rick, there's no romance in your soul. He did it because he loves her. Yeah. But would he be so dumb? Dumb? Yeah, dumb. He gets the wife and the whole club with one flick of the knife. Also gets himself right in the limelight. Now, some other fellow, maybe, but not Brunner. He's too smart. It doesn't figure, man. Oh, Rick, you're tired. You're tired. Come on. Go on home and get some sleep. Tomorrow, everything will look different. All right, Lieutenant. See you in the morning. <laughs> Who knew more about Janet Marquis than anyone else? Jimmy White, the funny man. So here I was, making like an alarm clock. Don't you guys ever sleep? Well, I'd like to talk to you. Call me tomorrow, about noon. Uh, it's about Janet. She's in trouble. Thank you. Now, what's happened to Janet? Well, she's going to be picked up in a few hours for her part in the murder. But Janet had nothing to do with it. The police see it differently. Seems she and Bruntner planned the whole thing. But that's ridiculous. Janet and Bruntner? Why, that's not true. So you knew about Red? Yeah, I know about him. Why didn't you mention it when you had a chance? I like breathing. One word about him and I'd be signing my own death warrant. What's this? Oh, that's uh, my old billing when I was in vaudeville. Jimmy White, the man of a hundred voices. You do impressions, huh? <laughs> what comic doesn't? That's how I got started. I bet you could impersonate almost anyone, uh, even Eddie. <laughs> I was also a magician. Get a load of this. That's very good. Uh, now make it disappear. I'm sorry, Diamond. But you're getting too warm. Jimmy White, man of a hundred voices. Oh, shut up. Come over here. So you killed him. Called me on the phone and uh, made me think it was Eddie. You planted the lead about Red. Yeah, and I borrowed Tonio's knife to do the job. Then I called Red and made him think it was Eddie. Told him to get over to the club right away. Well, that's why Mr. Brunner was so anxious to get out of town. He walked into Eddie's and knew he'd been sent up for a pigeon. Neat, huh? Almost perfect. I never figured you for Janet's boyfriend. Why? Because I'm just a comic? All my life I've heard that. Nobody takes a funny man serious. They don't think we got any feelings. Well, with her, I didn't have to make with the laughs all night. So the both of you decided to get rid of Eddie? No, the kid knew nothing about it. She just stuck with him. She was afraid. Well, now that you got the picture, it's your turn. That's very clever. Only one thing, uh, you better take down your billing. Uh, someone else might get the same idea. Operator, give me the police. I'd like to speak to Lieutenant McGough. Say, I'm real sorry, Jimmy. I never did catch your act. I bet you were screams. <laughs> 